Hi guys, it's Lynn here. Hope everyone's having a fantastic plant power day. Now in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a little bit of an update on what is in bud and bloom with my epiphytic cacti. And uh, I'm just going to start off first of all by being in the polytunnel. And by the way, if you hear that humming noise, buzzing noise, that's the dehumidifier switching on and off to keep the air dry in the polytunnel. And uh, this one here is one of my Ripsalis. This is Ripsalis pilocarpa. And it isn't in flower or bud, but it is packed with lots of little fruits, lots of little fruit pods there. Tons and tons of gorgeous little deep red berries. Really, really beautiful. And this Ripsalis is commonly known as the mistletoe cactus for the obvious reasons. So lovely to see all the little red berries. And in the new year, I'm going to be harvesting the seed from these gorgeous little berries it's never had so many fruits so it's lovely to see and then here I have a mixture of three different types of Slumbergia truncata commonly known as Thanksgiving cactus in here three different colors and um, I think it's red and white and pink now there's some buds forming on the red one there but the pink one is also packed with buds and look at that beautiful beautiful shocking pink flower absolutely gorgeous so happy to see that and then i'll just take it down here i've got on these two stands there a mixture of my um, slumbergeras and also uh, ripsalidopsis easter cactus is the tiny hatiora one as well there obviously that won't be flowering until the easter time and then i've got some more slumbergeras there all in bud and uh, these here are uh, this one here is the miniature slumbergera thor variety thorland and um, i've got a few of these this one has is in bud still and it has a fruit pod from last year still forming there wonderful to see so little buds there and uh, here are seedlings of um, Ripsalidopsis and Slumbergera that I've grown from seed myself. So they won't be flowering probably for a while yet. Now under here I have another uh, Slumbergera Thorland there that has been flowering and it's just coming to the end. Here is my, uh, was my white flowering Slumbergera truncata which has now turned pink because I think of the cooler temperatures in the polytunnel. And as you can see it's done flowering now, a couple of flowers at the back there but it's been blooming lovely for weeks absolutely gorgeous and as i say i've got different colored varieties there all in bud still and then here i'll show you got a lot of epiphytic cacti as you can see they're all in the hanging baskets but they're pretty much dormant at this time of year i've got some more ripsalis here as well and let's take you up here to show you what we've got blooming lovely now as I say, lots of other, lots of epiphyllums, they're having their winter rest at this time of year. So nothing much happening with them. I've got my aporophyllum that has got seed pods, fruit forming as well. Absolutely wonderful to see that. So again, more seed harvesting in the, in the uh, January, February time. I'm going to be busy doing that. And here is my, the Slumbergera Thor, the Thorland. And this is a beautiful variety of miniature little rose-like blooms and it's just starting to open its buds now it's been in bud for a while beautiful bright red this is the first one that has opened up here absolutely gorgeous as you can see and the other ones are just starting to open up their buds very very beautiful here i have this in a hanging basket and it's one of the miniature leaved varieties of Slumbergera, so it's extra special. A little bit purpley coloured the leaves at the moment because it gets, although this polytunnel is covered with a green cover, which isn't ideal for the desert types, it does give a bit of shade for the epiphytes, but it's still getting a bit too much winter sun. That's why the leaves are going to be a bit purple, but it doesn't harm it. And uh, lots of other things in flower, but I'm going to focus on that again. And then here I have my... Very, um, very wonderful, but no signs of buds, unfortunately. This is my Slumbergera Tendensa Orange Brazil, very special one. It naturally has red um, leaf segments. This is normal for this variety, um, but it hasn't bloomed. No signs of buds yet. Now, sometimes it blooms a little bit later in the January time, but as there's no signs of buds, shame with that one. The plant itself is lovely, but it has the most incredible, gorgeous gorgeous orange blooms when it does bloom and I think it's possibly because I repotted this a couple of months ago and it's done very well plumped it up lovely but that could have been what's prevented it from forming buds because the energy is going to the root system and then here I have my um, 
old, uh, well, a few cuttings of, but three or four different types of Slumbergera buckley. And this is the true Christmas cactus because it has the, the smooth scalloped edges. And happy to say, there is buds forming on this, as you can see. Lots of, uh, only very tiny early stages of buds. I've got a pink flowering one and a red flowering one in this, in this basket. And a couple of other different types that are both red flowering as well. More buds forming. So really excited about that. But this one always flowers for me more in the January, February time. And uh, it's a bit of a later bloomer because obviously the true Christmas cactus, which is this variety, does bloom later than the Thanksgiving cactus. And if you want to know how to tell the difference between a Christmas and a Thanksgiving cactus, do check out a video I've made on how to tell the difference um, between them both. I'll link that video up above and down below. And here I have a mixture of other Slumbergera truncatus in here, also Ripsalidopsis Easter cactus. And there's fruit pods here on the Ripsalidopsis. Sorry about the, the lighting, it's casting a shadow when the, the light's coming out. And this has been flowering on um, this, this Slumbergera's flowering up until recently. Lovely flowers, pink flowers that's, that's sort of come to the end, fell off now. And here I have a mixture of different types. Again, the light is not brilliant, so sorry about the shadow, guys. Hope you can see it's the trouble when the sun is coming in from this side and I can't really get up to show you a better view. But hope you can see all the buds on this as well. And this is my um, golden charm one that's been beautifully blooming as well there. Very lovely. So I've got quite a lot. And then I want to show you that the mother of all mothers, this one is my very old, 70-year-old Slumbergera truncata, commonly known as a Thanksgiving cactus. That is starting to come into beautiful full bloom now. Absolutely gorgeous. This is a very, very special plant. It's got a lot of history to it. Packed with buds, as you can see, all on this side here. And also some of the flowers have opened already, as you can see there. And I'll just take you around there. And I'll make a separate video on this, as I do every year. It's more like a little video diary because it is special when there's a few more that have opened up and I'm going to make a video to show you that isn't it just beautiful absolutely gorgeous so lovely to see more opened up as well but it's still mostly still in bud so it's going to be blooming beautiful completely very soon and I'll I'll show you what that's like when it's in full bloom so that's it in here we've got others epiphytes as well that are still pretty resting now at this time of year and now I'm going to show you what I've got in bloom and bud in my grow room. Now here I am in my office, that's also my grow room, and I have quite a lot of epiphytic cacti here on the hanging basket stand, all here. And I'm going to show you what's in bud and uh, also in little bloom. First of all, here I have my Ripsalis crispata, this one here, lovely hanging, hanging basket, and that is in bud as well. I'll just show you, get close up, little tiny little white buds from forming all the way around there and also some more at the top and uh, here see if you can see little buds there so that's going to be blooming beautiful very soon and then I have this lovely this is Ripsalis cassatha and it looks like a load of grass it's amazing I love it it's like green wacky hair and this one here has a little cute little winter white flower on there, absolutely beautiful, like a little snowdrop, it's gorgeous. And uh, there's another one forming here as well, little bud. So that's going to be producing more little buds over the, uh, the following weeks. And then here I have my um, lovely big, big leaf, scallop leaved Ripsalis here. And lovely buds all the way around it. Look at that, it's packed with buds. Just put my hands so you might be able to see it a bit clearer there, the sun's coming through. Absolutely wonderful. More buds up there and buds there as well. Very exciting. And this is my big Ripsalis Paradoxa. No buds on this yet, but it does normally bloom in the winter, so it'll probably be more January, February time. Lovely big uh, old plant there I've got. And then here, we haven't got any buds on this. This is a uh, Ripsalis Ramelosa, lovely sort of ready leaves. And it is full of fruit pods, so it has buds flowering in the summer and the lots of fruit pods on there as well. Lovely to see, so I'm gonna be harvesting these seeds very soon. And then I have to show you this. Now I have uh, three of my orchids in flower bud, spike and bloom. And the first one here, this is my Zygo patalum. 
and it is absolutely beautiful. Look at that guys, gorgeous purple flowers, deep plum coloured flowers, absolutely beautiful, really, really stunning. This is a dendrobium and that's in flower spike, which is very exciting to see. And then here I have a, it's one of the Cambria, it's, just, it's labelled as Cambria mix. So I haven't got the exact idea on this, but look at this guys, absolutely exquisite flowers, like a leopard print. Really, really beautiful and packed. The flower spike goes all the way up the wall there, about three feet high. So you can imagine what it's going to look like when it is all in bloom. Absolutely breathtaking. And last but not least, I have my little orange flower in uh, Slumbergera truncata. That is little orange beautiful blooms there. Very, very pretty. Three of them that have opened up. Very gorgeous. And this is a recently new edition that I got a couple of weeks ago from Lidl Supermarket. So this is one that I got that was already in bud. But I'm very happy to see that it's blooming because sometimes when you buy them in bud and you bring them back into the home, they can sometimes drop the buds because they're changing conditions. So I'm happy that this is blooming. And obviously once this has stopped blooming, I'm going to be putting it into the polytunnel with all my other slumbergeras. The reason why I didn't do this straight away with this one is because obviously I bought it from a warm supermarket. And I think if I'd put it into the polytunnel with much cooler conditions, it may have dropped the buds. But as soon as this stopped flowering, I'm going to put it back in there and I'm going to repot it and change the soil in the spring. Very beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed the little update on my Slumbergera cacti and also all the other epiphytes and the little orchids as well. And for lots more tips and tricks on how you can care for and grow cacti suns, then please do subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Desert Plants of Avalon. And for more growing tips on how you can care for and grow cacti succulents, do check out the many growing care pages I have on my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of cactus and succulents from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye, bye.